Okay, and the algorithm I'm going to show you that attempts to get clusters that that satisfy this kind of a condition is called Lloyd's algorithm. It's a very famous algorithm and lots of work done in analyzing it. So it's called Lloyd's algorithm. Okay, and it's a very simple algorithm. So imagine you have a bunch of data. Okay, so what it says is, well, you must pick centers for your clusters. So pick the first center randomly. Okay. Now, since we want centers to be far apart, okay, we want the centers to be far apart, pick the next center as far from this point as possible. So, so pick a data point that's as far from the point you just picked as possible. Now you have two points. Pick the next point as far from those two as possible. So to maximize the minimum distance to those two. And then pick the next point as far as possible. And then the next point and then the next point. So now we found the centers. Okay. Because why were we picking them as far as possible? Because we want the centers, we want the, the clusters to be well spread, spread as far apart as possible, i.e. we want their centers to be as far apart as possible. Okay. Now, you know, you, 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 we know the sort of Voronoi regions that correspond to each center. Right? We can construct it, it looks something like that. You know. Okay, so each you can construct the Voronoi regions co corresponding to each center. Okay, and now all the data points that are in owned by that center belong to that cluster. All the data points owned by this center belong to this cluster, and so on. Okay, so all the data points owned by this and and uh, and so on and so forth. So here, you know, all these points. Okay, now try to do it with two colors if possible, but I don't think I will succeed. So here, okay, I'm going to have to use green. Here's another. Okay, and then, okay, whatever, I'm going to use black here. Okay, so there are my four clusters. But now, once I've got data points for the clusters, I can update the center to the actual center of the data that correspond to that cluster. So maybe I'll update this center to here, update that center to here, update this center to maybe here, update this center to here, and so on. Okay. So I'll update the centers, and now I can, you know, recompute the Voronoi regions and recompute what data points are associated with each center, and I can repeat if I want, but more importantly, what I'll do next is that then I'll say, okay, now let me figure out what's the radius of each center. So I, I, I take the radius to the furthest point in my cluster. Okay, so now I can construct the radii, and so on. That's called Lloyd's algorithm. So let me show you Lloyd's algorithm in action, and then we'll summarize. Okay, so here's an example of data, and I'm going to show you Lloyd's algorithm in action. So you start by picking one random point, then you pick a point that's as far away as possible, that stays stay within the data, and you repeat, and you repeat, pick points as far away as possible in each iteration. Now you construct the Voronoi diagrams corresponding to your centers. Okay, now you update the centers so that they are the centers of the actual data that belong to their clusters. Okay, and now you can compute radii. Okay, and there we've got a clustering of the data, real data now into you know, clusters, and we have ex explicitly attempted to make the within cluster radii small compared to the between cluster radii by choosing clusters that are far apart. Okay. Now, this is an example of data that's not easy to cluster because it's just randomly distributed uniformly. And even with data that, where there are no real clusters, we can still perform the algorithm. We can perform the algorithm on any data set, but in real data, typically, there are well, nice, well-defined clusters, you know, biology books and, and uh, uh, agriculture books and theoretical physics books. They all cluster nice and tightly within their own regions that are well separated. Okay, so that's Lloyd's algorithm. So today, what have we studied? We studied you know, the efficiency issues of the k-nearest neighbor algorithm. And, you know, it's an ongoing area of research, how to find, you know, the best condensed data and also uh, the most efficient algorithms. And then it's another level of complexity to see how if you, up, if you change the algorithm that pr produces perhaps not the nearest neighbor, then how does it change the out-of-sample error? Okay, lots of interesting algorithmic and statistical issues, machine learning issues to study if you're interested in further research. Okay. But where are we going to go next? Okay. So, you know, one of the things that might have been bugging you about the k nearest neighbor and the nearest neighbor is, you know, so, so um, you have your training point x and, you know, you pick your k nearest neighbors, okay, and that's it, you've picked k. And what if there was another point just here 
And what if there were a whole bunch of points just outside that radius of k that were all negative and these happen to be majority positive. So these don't have any impact. Okay. So it seems a little bit limiting to, to sort of in a hard way restrict your attention to just k. One way of viewing that is all the, the neighbors within my, my k closest are getting a uniform weight, let's say equal to one, and everything else gets a weight zero. Okay. So is there an algorithm that can try to use all the data in classifying X? Perhaps weighting them in a way where you know closer data points get more weight and further away data points get less weight. Okay. And so indeed, we're going to go in that direction. And that, you know, that hypothesis said that learning model that we're going to develop, that we're going to derive actually, is called the radial basis function you know, learning model. And there are many ways to derive it. We are going to take the view of, you know, extending the nearest neighbor so that you can use all the data, but perhaps weighting data so that far away data points get less weight. Radial basis functions, next. For now, checking out.